Well, welcome, friends and family of Adoration Church. We are glad that you are joining us, and we have a very special guest with us today uh, who is going to be coming to us uh, October 27th, 28th, and the 29th uh, to hold uh, meetings with us. And I would I wanted to take the time just to introduce you to Ivan Roman. And Ivan is a prophetic revivalist, a prophet, a revivalist. He carries revival in his heart. He is also the senior leader of Empowered Life Church in Medford, Oregon. And how I connected with his ministry is through a mutual acquaintance that many of you are familiar uh, with that are uh, part of the family of adoration. And that is with Apostle Bob Haselman and also with Dan Dyer. And I was not in attendance at the conference. I was not able to attend uh, the conference that Apostle Bob Haselman holds. But I always try to keep up and I uh, listen to this uh, brother that they had in uh, to a conference. I believe it was about two years ago, wasn't it, Ivan, that you were there? And I was very blessed by his ministry, and I wanted to see if we could uh, connect in a way in which his ministry could be introduced not only to our church, but in our region. And if you've been around me for any length of period of time, you know that we carry in our heart a burden and a longing for revival. And sometimes there are things that are catalytic and uh, relationships and connections that, you know, people share the same DNA and heart. And I just felt there was a deposit in Ivan that I wanted to see brought into our region to cross pollinate with us to help us get where we're wanting to go in the Lord. And so, Ivan, I want to thank you for joining us, taking the time. I know you're a very busy, busy guy. Uh, you lead a congregation, but you have an extensive extra local ministry. Thank you for taking a few moments to be with us. And I just wanted to have the opportunity for people to get to know you that maybe uh, I know you said that you were in Wisconsin many years ago, but those that may have not have had the opportunity to experience your ministry, I wanted them to hear your heart and uh, maybe hear what God is speaking to you and what he's doing in your life. And so why don't you just take the floor and tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, and then we'll go from there. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited. So I'll just start off in the beginning, you know, married for 19 years. I have three boys. My kids are getting older. So just that alone keeps me very busy. My wife and I are, are crazy. We planted a church 11 years ago and we're not traditional, what you know, five-fold pastors. And so God has called us to build what I call a naoth. And if you remember David, when he was fleeing, he went to Samuel the prophet in Ramah as a place called Naoth. And our whole church is prophetic. And so we're a crazy bunch of people hosting the presence of God. And people come from the region to hear what God is saying. And it's it's a delight. I love it so much. And I have an international ministry that I've had since I was 20 years old. And um, things are things are shifting right now, Pastor. There's alignment that's taking place right now in the body of Christ where we're coming out of a season of hiding. And this whole thing that happened with COVID and 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 it doesn't matter where you're from, India, Pakistan, Wisconsin, or Oregon, we've come out of a season of trauma, of confusion, of fear, and the Lord is causing his warriors to rise up. It's a season of champions to come forth. And, and I'm actually uh, releasing this call to those that are in hiding to come forth. And you're in ministry for a long time, longer than me. You know, sometimes when you, you call somebody you haven't seen in church for a while, hey, brother, and they start, you know, they start accusing you of wanting their money or something weird, you know, so I don't even do that. But the Lord's been flashing people in front of my face and in prayer and saying, contact them. And, and I'm not known for that, you know, and I'm calling them and saying, hey, the Lord has need of you. Like, we need your strength. People are crying, telling me like uh, they're, they didn't go and leave offended. They didn't go to another church. They've been in a season of depression, isolation. The enemy's been attacking the body. 
We're in an assembled now season. It's no longer time to play games. And so I'm excited about your heart for revival. And as my wife's been talking to me about your guys' communication, she's like, Ivan, she's like, I'm so excited that you're being hosted again for people that want revival. You know, I'll be honest with you. The last churches that bring me in, they just want a couple prophetic words and, you know, goosebump. No, that's not where the church is at right now. People are in a place of longing and contending. We need the authentic gospel of Jesus to show up. I've been traveling all over the world, Brazil, Portugal, Mexico, all over. And I'll tell you, my expectation for our time together is a move of God. Yes. We've been seeing healed. I mean, scoliosis healed, deafness healed. And so I'm excited, as you can tell, because uh, the, the times have changed. We're in a time where God is calling forth his warriors to rise. And that's what I believe that he's doing in Wisconsin. That's what I believe is going to happen with you guys. You know, I, I want you to know that I think that uh, the preparation that I see among our team in wanting to really, and and I, I, I maybe want to preface what I was going to say with this. Um, I so appreciate and value the fivefold ministry. Uh, but it's not just about a person's gifts. It's a revelation of Christ in the midst of his church uh, to equip and to build and to release something. And, and I know that God could use any number of vessels, um, but we are leaning in and, and believing, and, and we just said we're intentionally setting this time apart, not for Ivan, but for the Lord. Yes. Um, and we're fasting and praying uh, prior to that, because I do believe in cross-pollination, I do believe things are catalytic, but we're believing for God to reveal himself. Uh, to his people, and we want to experience, um, and I know there are many definitions for revival, uh, but, you know, I don't want to limit God in any way, whatever he wants to do, we're just going to be uh, open to to his move, and to allow him to do it his way, uh, and, and we are seeing, uh, we're seeing the, the warfare uh, so there is a necessity for warriors to arise to engage in that warfare and to express the victory of the cross. Um, but I also see there is breakthrough that's coming uh, for those that are willing to pay the price and engage and not back down and back away, but have a, a courageous faith. And I'll just say that uh, we had a, a family in our church that has a connection. Um, some of the family are here. Some of them live in a, another state, but we're very connected with them relationally. And she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And they were here about a month ago. And we are just making more and more room for God in our gatherings. Uh, and we are not going to worship the clock we're not going to restrict ourselves. We're, uh, matter of fact, I think the service went uh, over two and a half hours Sunday just to make room for all of, of what God wanted to do. That really stretches children's workers. <laughs> right. I do. Um, and it's not very seeker friendly, but we want to say, God, whatever you want to do. And we had the privilege of giving the testimony that. She was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and the doctor re-examined her, retested her, and he said, it is remarkable, uh, the change. And there's not a complete manifestation. There was only one dark spot on her lungs. Whereas when they screened her, her lungs were completely dark, both sides, both lobes of the lung. Mm -hmm. And so we know that there's a, a miracle taking place there. And the doctor said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, because he said, this is nothing short of miraculous. And I, I feel like God is giving us first fruits of breakthrough, and that is only to lead to greater increase. Yeah. Sounds dangerous what you're doing, making room for God. 
creating yeah. space for God, praying for miracles. Sounds like my kind of place. Um, <laughs> and I, and I, I wish we could say that uh, the whole church would jump on board and let God be God in the church. But I, I think that some of us have to reach a point of desperation before we're willing to let go of the controls. But uh, God is going to get us there. So um wanted to ask you, where do you see um, in the future the Lord taking the church? So as God begins to awaken and revival begins to spread, what do you what do you see the church is going to be like in the days to come? I really believe in a victorious overcoming bride. And I believe that is the season that we're in. That's why there's been so much alignment taking place. The church is just, some are still in, but we're coming out of a Genesis, what is it, 26, 28, Jacob wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing that within God's people. There's a wrestling because there's a name change coming. And so I believe we're stepping into this transitional season as a church where we're advancing the kingdom in every sphere of society. It's transformation that's taking place. So our churches have to transition, and they are from a hospital and all these cute little words that we use. No, they, they, we are a family, but we're a family on a mission. We're a community with a purpose. They have an assignment to advance the kingdom. And what, what we're beginning to see is, is uh, friends of mine, you know, where I'm getting invited to some of these meetings where politicians are coming and they're asking for the word of the Lord. In every sphere of society, people are desperate for the wisdom of God. And I believe that's for such a time as this, God is raising up his people to be his voice on the earth. And the strategies and solutions are coming from the body of Christ. And it's exciting for me because it's, it should have always been that way, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I see how the church, when we walked away from our supernatural inheritance, uh, we just became the cruise ship or the country club. And we've just became one more competing fraternity uh, with no distinction. And God is trying to cause the church to recapture her identity. And uh, I think Bob, Apostle Bob Haselman said it the best. And I don't know if he stole it from somebody else who stole it from somebody else. But he said, you know, about... Moses and the magicians of Egypt, he said it was when the magicians could not reduplicate what Moses did. Uh, and, and it's time for the church to start doing what the world cannot do. And I think that is a powerful thing. Did he steal that from you? I, I should claim that. No, I'll cut it and tweet it out, you know. <laughs> I've been Roman. No. <laughs> and I and I think that that's what we've been doing. We've tried to reduplicate what the world can do. And they always have more money. They always have more resources. They they you know, they can script it better. They you know, their smoke machine will always be greater. Uh, their light show will always be better. But the thing they cannot reduplicate uh, is the demonstration of the power of the kingdom. I love that. So uh, share with me just in our remaining time together, because I told you we have uh, not a subscription to Zoom that allows us to go to extended time. Share with me about how you came to know the Lord. And then obviously there was this uh, emergence of the call of God upon your life. So what did that look like? I'll move through this fairly quickly because it's a little bit, I was, um, wasn't raised in the church. At 20 years old, I was an innocent bystander of a drive-by shooting in Philadelphia. And so I was drunk, and there was a drive-by shooting, and something grabbed me and pulled me away from a bullet that was intended to go to my head. I wasn't, they were shooting at everybody. It wasn't like I was the one that's a drive-by shooting. So they started all the way from one side of the block, all the way over. I was passed out because I'd been drinking, and I, my hand, head was rested like this. Something grabbed me, pulled me away. A bullet went by my forearm, and a man was shot in his hip that was next to me. So at that time, my friends are crying and screaming, and people are, it's Philadelphia. So if you don't know Philly, it's not going to, it's talking about a lot of people. So screaming, crying. We get in the vehicle, and I'll have to send you a picture of that night because it's funny. Ivan at 20, uh, leather jacket, you know, the whole thing, the bottle of champagne. You get a picture of what my life was like. And, um, I had the inner audible voice of God speak to me and say, where would you go if you died right now? 
And my uncle was Pentecostal and he tried to lead me to Jesus like 25 times. And, and um, I responded to this thought, well, I'm drunk, I'd go to hell. That was my response to a thought that I'm interacting with. The next question was, where was that man shot? And so I recall hearing my hip, my hip. And so I, I'm, I'm interacting with this thought and I see a picture, which we would call a vision. And I see the bullet going from my head, something pulled me back and the man getting shot in his hip, that would have been my forehead. So, you know, I didn't fall on my knees and say, there's a God. I actually was gripped with fear. I felt like, why would somebody try to kill me? I didn't understand that I had a supernatural experience at that time because something tried to kill me. It was there that led me to this place of realizing that eternity, I could die. I could die in a moment that brought me into the church that my uncle was going to and surrendering my life to Jesus. So it's kind of a radical encounter with God, but I think that's what it would have took for me back then. Yeah. Wow. And so from your salvation, when did you step into ministry? Was it quickly after your salvation? Six months old in the Lord, a power evangelist was ministering, seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. I thought it was all garbage. thought it was all fake until my aunt Doris got healed, who was like a second mom to me. And uh, I went home the next day. I lied in my face and said, God, if you can use me the way you use that man, have him invite me to travel all over the world. And uh, so I get up, wipe the tears from my, I think that's the dumbest prayer anybody's ever prayed. The next day in the meeting, the evangelist is doing what he does, high level word of knowledge, prophetic ministry, and he's praying for people. And then he stops and he points to me and he says, young man, if you have an invitation to travel, I extend an invitation. If you have a desire to travel with me, I extend an invitation for you. My mom's in the meeting. There's 500 people in the meeting. It's like, and uh, I ended up traveling with that man for one year and I've been in full-time ministry ever since. So wow. after six months old in the Lord from that drive-by shooting incident, I was in supernatural ministry. So it's always been the supernatural for me. There's never not been. So planting the church was an eye-opener that people really don't believe in the stuff that you and I are talking about, and some don't even want it. And that's been where my heart has grieved over the church, that they would recover the supernatural presence of the living God, that we would see a demonstration of the Holy Spirit move. And it, and it has to happen within the church. We need revival before reformation. And so right now I've laid my life down to serve his body, to see his body come alive in the season. That's what I believe. I believe God says one plan and his plan is the body of Christ. <laughs> There's no plan B. It's you and Absolutely. I. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, my brother, our time is quickly run out. And uh, if you don't mind, would you just, uh, I want us to pray into you coming. And um, could we just spend some time together? And it doesn't have to be lengthy. But just be, um, I, I, I invite you just to pray into it, and then I'll seal our time with prayer too. So Lord, I do. I thank you that that there's Kairos moments where, where you just create uh, an alignment in the realm of the Spirit for such a time as this. And Lord, I thank you for this trip, and I thank you for the prayer and the preparation. And, and like my brother said, Lord, it's not about a man or a woman. It's about you. And so we just pray, Lord, that you would increase our hunger for your manifested presence. We ask you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you would release, Lord, all that you have planned for this trip. God, I ask for people that don't know Jesus to come. We ask for the, for the lost to come. Father, we ask for an increase in the supernatural. Lord, and I pray that there would be impartation of the prophetic anointing. Lord, I ask that people would, it wouldn't just be a come and look and, and come and get, but it would be impartation, Lord, that people would leave with an increase of not only hunger, but eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, I thank you for this, the prophetic anointing, Lord, that rests upon this house. Lord, the desire to see your presence, not just come and go, but to abide. So, Lord, we do declare, Lord, a resting place, Lord, that you're building a resting place. You're building a habitation. And, Lord, I thank you that that you're just you're causing us to stoke the fire. Lord, I thank you for that abiding flame that rests upon this ministry. So we bless what you're doing, Father. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank and you, Father, Father, we just right now, we just declare again our love for you. And I thank you, God, for increasing within Adoration Church, 
uh, a gift of hunger, a gift of thirst, uh, to go deeper in intimacy, deeper into your heart. Lord, that we would know you in the power of your resurrection and in fellowship with you in suffering. Jesus, we want to be like you. And Father, we just pray that uh, you would prepare a vessel that is ready and prepared uh, for your fullness. All that you want to give us, God, we just cry out for more. We cry out for more. This is the hunger of our heart. We want more. We want more of you. And Lord, we just thank you for preparing a people that are ready for you, that you can do in and through and among us all that you have longed to see uh, through us, through your church, in this region. And Father, we thank you for Ivan, and we thank you for his heart to serve the body and to travel. And, and Father, I pray for his family. I pray for Erica, his wife. I pray for his, his children and the sacrifice to release and the faith to release their dad and their husband to be able to be obedient to your will. And I pray that you would pour back upon them. Um, Father, blessing after blessing uh, for the gift that they release to the wider body of Christ to be able to build your house and to serve your purpose. Lord, we ask, God, that you would bless the church, Empowered Life Church, as they release uh, him apostolically to go and prophetically to go. Father, we pray that you would bless them, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you, my brother, for your time with us, and I look forward to, to seeing you in a couple of weeks. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait to. All right. Bless you.